Day one at the 85th National Ploughing Championships here in Scraggan, Tullamore County, Offaly. With over 300,000 attendees expected, we spoke to our head of Agri, John Fitzgerald, and the head of the NPA, Anna Mae McHugh. It's the 85th uh, National Ploughing Championships. It's early in the morning, you can see the crowds are here already, so there's a, it, it, there, it's a really good day. And People have obviously taken the opportunity to come out. Uh, families are here. Uh, they've been moving around the site since very early in the morning. It's an event that started off in a, a very small way and uh, it, it has gone beyond all our expectations now it has grown. The growth of it to incorporate all the different uh, businesses like the departments of agriculture and uh, environment and Chagas and the banks, the financial companies. Now uh, we, we expanded then into fashion shows, cultural competitions and all the universities and the hospitals. and. Uh, you know, we bring the urban and the rural people together, and that in itself is a great, is a, it's a great for them. The ploughing is part and parcel of, of Irish rural society at this stage. It's it's one of the highlights of the year for many, many people. So, they're taking the opportunity to come and see, you know. Uh, rural Ireland display itself and opportunities for, for businesses to interact with their customers. A few years back people said well it's just a ploughing and nothing else in it but there is a lot here and uh, you know from shopping to catering to everything you want to see is here in Scregan uh, for the next three days. Nobody can go home and say there was nothing in it for me because that would be incorrect. There is really something for everyone to come see here, even for the young children. Uh, we're here uh, to, to meet our, our customer base right throughout the country and we're expecting in the region of 25,000 plus customers to call to us uh, over the next couple of days. This year at, the, at, our, at our stand at the ploughing we have a, a number of, of themed information areas uh, starting with, with managing uh, volatility uh, as, as all farmers will know we've gone through a particularly difficult uh, 18 months particularly uh, on, on commodity prices right across the board from dairy, beef, uh, tillage and so on. So it's about looking at ways of insulating uh, their farm business against uh, commodity price drops and you know I suppose what are the things that farmers can do uh, to help protect their business through that period. While this is a busy couple of days for, for us in the bank, uh, we enjoy it. It's a great opportunity to, to meet customers out of the cut and trust of a business environment so we can have that relaxed conversation and it helps build a relationship and an, and an understanding of each other and where we're coming from as well. Oh, my first memory was going to a ploughing match with a school case and competitors' plot numbers in it and in a little marquee with no floor and maybe the water running out through the door. That would be a memory I would have. And I'm going back to the late 50s on that now, but nowadays you have a huge number of volunteers and a huge number of girls in the office as well. But that was a memory. And of course, a very happy memory I had was in 1954, in 64, I should say, when Charlie Keegan from Wick Wicklow won the world ploughing in Austria. And that was something that we were so emotional that we nearly cried on the field when we got the results. So, you know, it, that was a great uplift for the association. But we have won it a number of times since. And we're looking forward now to 2021 when we'll stage the world ploughing in Ireland and it'll be a record breaker. With lots of business being done over the next couple of days, we caught up with Gowan Distributors to see how the Peugeot brand is doing. And this is about the, the seventh year in a row that we've been back to the National Ploughing Ch Championships. Uh, obviously this is the first year in Tullamore, so it was a new site, so very exciting coming in this, mor this morning. And there's no platform in Ireland like it. And it's lovely to be out with the public, talking to them, uh, finding out what they think of the product, what they'd like to see in the product, uh, telling them what's coming next. That's the other exciting thing. And um, it's not just farmers, it's um, industry. It's industry-wide. Customers from all walks of life come to the ploughing. It's the biggest show in Europe. We'd be mad not to be here. With over 150,000 social media followers, we couldn't help but have a little bit of fun with the twins from The Happy Pair. We're here doing stuff with Rena. We've got a food truck and we're cooking up pasta and pesto and all sorts of stuff all afternoon. And then we're so. going to be doing demos with Super Value up on their stage, which would be great, but part of the Good Food Karma campaign. So I guess our thing is vegetarian and pro whole foods and encouraging people to be foods that are higher in fibre and lower in calories. So but. making healthy food taste good. Just couldn't believe it. I thought Electric Picnic or Body and Soul or any of these were big festivals. And then you come to the Ploughing Championship with 120,000 people. It's just mind This is where Ireland is really at, you know. It's like you going know, to a different planet. Like yeah. I open feel it's like, wow. You know how embedded agriculture is in Ireland, because this is really an agricultural festival with kind of part of a car show and food bits and whatever, but it's, Amazing. I think agriculture is the heart of it. Like nothing you've ever been at before. 
It's great to see Irish businesses expanding and we caught up earlier with Tom Hennessy from Manor Stone to see how the ploughing is helping him do just that. We're from Balakala County Leash. We're very much a country-based, agri-based uh, business. We started in 99 with uh, the stone and the chippings and the windowsills, mostly natural stone products. We proceeded on then, um, that we moved into the garden centre, into the shrubs and plants and giftware, and uh, that end of it is going quite well for us. Since we started in business in 99, we have always done the, the ploughing championships. Because our, our business is so agri-based and the stone is from the land and the plants and so forth, we, we sell a lot into the rural markets, urban markets, but it's a great showcase. Huge amount of people coming uh, and visiting our stands and we can show off the different products and, show, and advertise our premises and advertise our, our sales team on the road as well. We uh, always benefit from a huge quantity of of uh, useful customers and uh, a lot of inquiries and, uh, and that gives our sales team um, work to continue on into the back end of the year which is very important. The back end of the year would, would always be the lean period. So to get so many leads over a three day period it carries us in over the Christmas period into the new year. Sports played a major role in the Bank of Ireland marquee earlier today and Liam Sheedy spoke to some of Ireland's leading sports personalities. OK, it's great to be here with Podge Collins, Jules Starr with Claire. Uh, Podge, uh, savage to be up here at the Ploughing Championships, celebrating Tip's great victory in all Ireland. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever celebrate a victory for Tip, to be honest. No, uh, I thought we were coming up to Offaly today, but all I've been seeing is Tip jerseys and <laughs> Tip jackets and stuff. And Come here, uh, crack low going well for you again this year? Yeah, no, the club's going well. Um, I suppose the county, like the football went well, we got to the quarter final and a few good wins. Um, the hurling, probably not so much. Galway gave us a bit of a clip and Waterford beat us as well. So uh, very disappointing in that sense, but um, hopefully we'll start things out now and get back at it next year. And Come here, who's the joker in the pack in that hurling bunch? And the hurling bunch, I suppose, Galvin's a bit of a character, all right, I think. Which knows. one? Uh, Colum. <laughs> Colum. Uh, he's, a, he's a character, he's a, he's a funny man, uh, great man to be around, great man to be around, he's always been. OK, I'm joined now by uh, Leinster and Irish star Sean O'Brien, so uh, obviously mad keen to get back on the pitch, so Sean, how's the uh, recovery going? Yeah, it's going pretty well, um, probably uh, three to four weeks away now, hopefully from returning, so see the finishing line makes it a lot easier um, going in every day, so uh, yeah, I'm happy with the way things have went and looking forward to getting back. Very good. In terms of uh, life away from the rugby ground, have you been spending much time on the farm lately? Uh, bits and pieces now. I've been trying to stay away from it and, and keep the head down rugby wise and get my rehab sorted and uh, leave, leave the father to do all the work the last few months. But uh, I've been kind of keeping away from it as best I can. I was looking at you there in the VR, uh, driving the tractor. What, what, how did you find it? Yeah, it was actually, uh, it's, it's, some, it's quite cool actually. Um, to the way it's done and uh, I don't think I'll be ploughing anytime soon. I look behind me one stage, there's a bit of a, a, a bend in the plough, so. And obviously, uh, you know, looking at, at, at Munster and, and uh, they're coming to the Aviva now in a, in a few weeks' time, I think you're, you're hoping to get back for that, yeah? Yeah, please God, I'll be there, thereabouts and up for selection around that time maybe, but um, yeah, it'll be a big game, obviously, it always is a big game and uh, there's great um, respect among the players. I think the fans have I suppose they're the ones that, that more so hate each other, I think, but um, it's uh, to be a, a tense encounter as always, and but, but should be a great game. Yeah, they're special days. Listen, Sean, thanks for taking the time to talk to us today in the Bank of Ireland 10. Thank you. Mike Harlick from our innovation team was lucky enough to catch up with the latest updates in Agritech. Thanks, Ola. Three companies, great ideas. Let's go and have a look. Hi, I'm here with uh, Daniel Carroll with Cabalis. Um, what are you doing here today? What I've done is I've developed a uh, a horse trickle feeder so what it does is it slowly feeds horses in a more natural feeding routine yep. so if you look at a horse out in the field they're slowly grazing hay or sorry grass slowly yep. throughout the day so what the feeder does is it very simply allows them to adopt that feeding practice while they're in the stable and in doing so enhancing their digestive health efficiency reducing the risk of various illnesses as well gotta say you look very young for a venture like this um, can you tell a bit tell us a bit about yourself yeah i'm still in fifth year in school um, wow. This all arose out of a BT Young Scientist project, and it's just Amazing. it's just kind of taking me on a journey from there. Yeah. Um, so I'm here with Tommy McGuire from Contemplate. Uh, Tommy, what are you doing here today? Well, we're here today just to get to talk to some of our customers and our potential customers that are in the industry today. 
And uh, what's the, we're in the innovation tent, so why in the innovation tent? What, what products have you got? So we have designed a software application um, for Android and iOS and it's designed for the commercial operators in the animal feed business. So up to this stage, the vast majority of all their compliance requirements are done uh, with pen and paper. So we've designed an application to digitize the whole, whole process and make their life easier. So that's why we're here today. And uh, how's it going for you at the ploughing at the moment? Yeah, it's great. I mean, we've just been in, we've done some pitching with Enterprise Ireland as well. We're getting to talk to some of our potential clients. So it's a really, really good opportunity to be here today. And I uh, hear you're uh, part of the Female Founders Programme. Could you tell me what the Female Founders Programme is about? Yeah, the Female Founders Programme is a, a joint initiative um, between Enterprise Ireland and the NDRC. It's sponsored by Bank of Ireland and it's basically to showcase the talents of female founders and to bring them into an accelerator programme in order to scale their businesses up much quicker than they could have done by themselves. That sounds fantastic. Now, when you say accelerator programme, yeah. what, what, what is an accelerator programme? Well, it's basically whereby we get supports and mentors um, in order to kind of fine tune our business models and um, to look at our value proposition and to make sure that what we're doing, I suppose, is, is well tested and justified. And it's just to put us in the right track going forward, that we're speaking to the right people and that we've got the right application of our business as well. Hi, I'm here with Dan O'Donoghue from Farmflow. Um, Dan, what brings you here today? Today we're launching our agronomist product from Farmflow, which is going to take paper out of the service that an agronomist gives to farmers in Ireland and the UK. That's brilliant. So how's it going for you uh, at uh, Plowing at the moment? Thanks very much. We've had a very, very good response. We marketed out to the agronomists over the last 24 or 48 hours. We had a really good turnout today. We've got some great interest and we've got some international interest as well, which is great. So our product is written in such a way we can localise it and uh, bring it to another market. So what actually brings you into the innovation tent today? Well, our innovation is designed to take paper out of farming. So this particular product we're launching today, the farmer's advisor, who's an agronomist, an expert in giving him advice on agrochemical use and fertilizer use, will now record his activities and his recommendations to the farmer on our app, rather than using uh, carbon paper and duplicate copies like he would be doing at the moment if he doesn't have a, a so software system. So it's all based on an app. Um, is there a desktop? Is there anything else the farmer can use? Ours is cloud-based, so he can use it, the, the agronomist can use it sitting at his tablet in the Jeep, or he can use it on a smartphone. He can sit down at the desk and do administration through his laptop or his home computer. So it's very versatile when it's set in cloud. Yeah, that sounds a uh, great flexibility there. So where are you at as a business? We'd be a relatively uh, early stage startup. We've been around for a number of years. I've just joined the business in the last four months, and we're looking to grow the business now by launching these innovative products taking them out to market, getting early um, traction, and then there's a farmer application, so the farmer can then start keeping his records digitally as well, as opposed to having to write, write up the books at the end of every day, because farmers are very stressed, they're, they're time poor, they love farming, they hate paperwork is our research, and we're looking to solve that piece of pain and deliver painless, paperless farming for the future. So your market, is that in Ireland or further afield? We've got a global, ambitions. We've got a reseller in New Zealand who's working on the New Zealand and the Australia market. We've had some interest from the US and we're primarily looking at proving our model in Ireland and the UK in the current markets. It wouldn't be the ploughing championships without a little bit of food production. Stephen Comley from Think Business caught up with one of Ireland's top food producers. So I'm here with Morgan Sheehy from uh, Devonish Nutrition. Uh, Morgan, you have a very interesting um, product. Essentially, it's trying to revolutionise the way people consume omegas. Yes, that's true. Um, we have been working on omega-3 nutrition with up to 25 years. And two years ago, we had a significant breakthrough where we were able to get the omega-3s into the muscle in the meat. And we've been particularly focusing on chicken. And what benefits do omega-3s have to, the, uh, to people? First of all, it can significantly reduce cholesterol, significantly reduce blood pressure, and trial work that we have done with College of Surgeons in Dublin has also significantly reduced platelet count, uh, uh, which is the highest correlation to coronary heart disease. The whole purpose of this is to get more omega-3s into human nutrition. Uh, everyone has established the benefits of omega-3 in fish oils and so on, but getting the product 
naturally in food is much more bioavailable to the human than obtaining it through capsule or liquid form. And that's all from us here today from day one at the National Planning Championships 2016.